here is Megan. Okay. Okay. Wow. Hi, everyone. Wait, wait, wait. Just don't start the slides yet, because I, I just want to say before we start anything that pretty much Bex just summed up the whole reason why I do Bali Spirit Festival. Just want everyone to know that. Where are you, Bex? Wherever you are. Because the whole point of this really is to shift people out of the asana into activism. What Bali Spirit Festival does is it lights a fire in every single person who walks in the door to have an inward shift, which then is an outward shift that then allows them to make a difference in the world, whatever it is. Divorce your husband, marry your husband. <laughs> have a kid, don't have a kid. Open a business, don't open a business, or go to Palestine and help people. Okay, so that's the real thing, but here's my presentation, so let's go. <laughs> okay, so Bali Spirit Festival is five days and five nights, not four nights, of incredible yoga, dance, and music. Um, it has been going on for nine years, and the whole reason why I did this festival is because I grew up in New York City, and I was surrounded by world music and incredible diversity, and I moved to Bali, and I married this really cool guy, and I thought, hey, it's a little boring here. Let's bring a little bit of the world to Bali. There's only so much gamelan I can dance to. So then, in the early years, I wore a lot of Pakyana dot, and I popped out a couple of kids. And then, you know, I, can't, I got too fat to sit on a motorbike. Well, now, my big inspiration for Bali Spirit Festival was Balinese culture. I think that's my husband. That's his brother. That's his mother. And that is a great aunt. And they uh, have inspired me through the years with their grandmother, sorry. They have, <laughs> they, oh, okay, so let's start from the beginning. So this is me and my Sweet 16 party. Why did, once again, why did I start the festival? Because I love to party. So it started really early, and I always was known for throwing the best parties with all my friends. So that was the beginning of it. Mixed with the Balinese culture and wanting to bring some kind of inspiration to my Balinese friends, I launched Bali Spirit. So as you can see, you can walk through the colorful entryway as a mother and a child, and you can be brought into this new environment. And when you come into this new environment, you're smiling. That's the whole point. You smile and your heart opens, and before you know it, you get to the Dharma Fair. Wow, what's the Dharma Fair? Dharma Fair is vendors in a community yoga space. It's the NGO booths. There's some really good food by cafe, down to earth, alchemy, maybe if they came back this year, Ryoshi, a whole bunch of other people. But basically you have a bunch of hippies from Australia and the United States combined with some Balinese musicians doing topeng, okay? What's so exciting every day at the Dharma Fair is you get to see different Balinese performances every single day at about 12.30 and you can do this all for 50,000 a day. That's it, right? And kids can come in and play, which is really awesome. There's some Ketchak. This group, I believe, is Kabogi Ketchak. They've come to the festival almost every year for eight years. This year, they're not coming back because we have Chudamani group. <laughs> Woo! Wherever Emiko is, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I guess, once again, it's the collaboration of cultures that you see at the festival, right? And these little guys are thoroughly enjoying it. On the last day of the festival, we, we have Hari Chinta Kiluarga, which has opened up to the general population of anyone who wants to come in, and we've got bilingual classes. It's amazing because our um, children's area this year is all made out of bamboo, and it's going to be a lot of fun. One of the best things about Bali Spirit Festival is that every year I get to be really creative and come up with new kooky ideas. So last year, we made a five-meter twister. That was really fun. And we have the twister somewhere in a box, and hopefully it'll come out this year. But just imagine being able to crawl all over your friends at lunchtime. Ellen Watson, who's a phenomenal masseuse with Esalen Massage, she teaches every year at the festival. Um, she comes, uh, I think, from Japan every year, and she gives sessions uh, in groups of seven or eight people, and you can be one of the people on the table. You might decide that you want to go swimming, or you might decide to do this. Now, I know my friend Nadine practices this regularly. She's right there. Nadine is from Jamaica, and she brought me this really beautiful mala. 
to bring in the connection between the two islands of Jamaica and Bali. So one of the other things you can do at the festival, if you're a guy, is look for girls. <laughs> You think that they're really worried about the people swimming. I don't think so. Anyone know that guy? Yeah. <laughs> so there's massage, there's swimming, there's the kids area, and there's Bex and Carlos teaching you how to be huggable. Where are you, Bex, doing acro yoga? Um, Carlos and Bex have been a part of the festival for many years, and this year we have a huge yoga uh, acro yoga contingent. There's probably too much acro yoga. You'll get really sick of it. But every day, at least twice a day. You can also do dance classes. Anyone remember this from last year? Anyone there? Yeah. So on the last day of the festival, there's ecstatic dance at one o'clock. This year it's with DJ Taz, who travels around the world doing Wonderlust festivals. And um, it's probably the best day of the five days because everyone's gone through five days of transformation. From the dance, let me tell you, you can get a yoga butt. <laughs> that is a really good thing, apparently. That's what I heard. So Malaika will be teaching African dance for children on Sunday. And during the rest of the week, it's Olivier who you hold for here. All right. And if you really practice hard, you can do this. I'd like to thank all of my teachers, Denise, Bex, Nadine. Tanya, Tina, for this training. <laughs> All right, so moving on from the daytime, we have the nighttime. So this is where you get really sweaty and you get to dance to phenomenal music from musicians from all over the world. This year we've got the Africans, the South Americans, the Koreans who are painting on the side. We have a group called Opio from Australia on Saturday night. We have um, a group from Borneo, this is a uh, spirit of the hornbill. They work um, really hard to raise awareness about what's going on in the forest in Borneo, which you already know, and I'm too like stressed out to tell you about. But they're phenomenal in their back, so please support them. Come make a donation in their booth and see that you can make a difference. So going back to what I said earlier about loving to throw parties, when I was a kid, I threw parties. When I was 16, I threw parties. Then I grew up and I threw parties. But the parties that I throw are different. They're all about inspiring people to make a shift and to lead the change. So join us and come.